Welcome back to our live coverage of the Mackinac Policy Conference. So Stephen is out on the foggy front porch of the Grand Hotel right now with Dan Lepp. Hey, Stephen. Hey, Christy. Uh, Dan Lepp, CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Thanks for being here. Stephen, glad to be here. So a lot of issues in your sphere uh, swirling right now. Let's start with the opioid crisis, which I don't know that everybody thinks has an effect on insurance companies, but you guys have a big role to play here. Yeah, it's it's a huge issue, and you know it's interesting. I got involved about a year and a half ago. Uh, a good friend of mine I went to high school with, the dentist in Macomb County, and he said you gotta you gotta sort of get this, and we've been really aggressive uh, in the field. Uh, you know, it, it, 70% of the employers in Michigan are impacted by one way or the other, either employees or their families by opioids. And yesterday's uh, conversation uh, with Bud Denker and with Barbara McQuaid, um, I think highlighted it was, it was really quite um, interesting how much feedback I got afterwards of people thinking, making it more on themselves of saying, wait a minute, A, I need to go into the medicine cabinet and get rid of this, or what about my own, you know, my company's claims or whatever that, you know, people begin to personalize it. And I think this thing has been, you sort of figure it's somebody else, when the truth of the matter is, it's all of us. It's all of us. Yeah. Uh, do you worry about the liability side of this, given that sometimes this is about prescription use at first uh, and then goes to, to other things? I mean, there's a lot of a lot of money, it seems like, maybe at stake uh, in this crisis as well as the, the public health concerns. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, the ignorance level around it is big. And I think probably the most important thing we can do, because we touch, you know, we cover one every two people in Michigan, is the awareness level, not only with, with our subscribers, but with, uh, with physicians and hospitals as well. I mean, we're partnering with the, uh, the Michigan Health uh, Hospital Association, uh, the, the MSMS and MOA, the docs and the, uh, the osteopathic and, and the medical society in a safe RX, you know, because it's not, I, I would say five, six, seven percent is bad activity. The rest of it's ignorance. And once people understand what's going on, most people are going to do the right thing. And I think that's beginning to happen, but there's a long way to go. Uh, let's also talk about the changes to the Affordable Care Act at the national level and the effect that they will have on states like Michigan and companies like yours. Yeah, I think the, the combination of, and, and it's going to be a huge political issue uh, this fall, Stephen, I think, between the ACA um, and the, you know, the expansion of Medicaid, because between the two, uh, you're covering probably almost a million people in Michigan. And if that goes away um, and the ACA is becoming more difficult, um, we're still covering 200,000 people, you know, under the Affordable Care Act. Uh, but Medicaid expansion and what plays out there, because I think it's a, it, it's a pretty significant issue. And, you know, I'm a believer, I'm a believer in covering people. I mean, we at Blue Cross view the more people covered, the better. And, uh, you know, once people have health care for the, for the thousands of people that never had it and now you have it, the fact that you're not going to have it after you have it, it I think, is a, is a huge public policy issue, but I think it's a pretty significant political issue, too. Uh, and there's always that issue of consistency, right? Uh, the, the expectations that people have, uh, the ability that you have to meet those expectations, right. those get overturned a little bit when you see changes made radically, I guess, uh, in legislation. Well, it's sort of like anything. People like consistency. And, you know, I would love to be, because we couldn't do it in the ACA because of the political undertones of everything that happened. But I'm hopeful over the last, you know, the next three or four or five years that you can have some consistency in Medicaid. Because if you think about it, a family that never had health insurance that for a five or six or seven year period actually every year goes to a primary care doc, what does that mean for the public health of our community? And it probably means all good things. Uh, whereas if you don't, it's the exact opposite. So I'm hopefully we, we can continue to have at least some consistent. I think the governor has been um, really out there in a good way around uh, around you know the Medicaid expansion. I'm hope, hopeful we can continue that. Are, are you worried that uh, as the costs move more to the state level uh, that we won't be able to sustain it in the same way that uh, that we are right now? Well, we're going to have to figure it out because you're you're right. Uh, 
the ticket's going to go on the taxpayers here, and we got to learn to manage it better. Um, on the other hand, if the alternative is uncompensated care, where you get your treatment in the emergency room, it's an, an enormously costly. And I think, you know, you got to look at the big picture. Um, I think, you know, you look in red states, there are red states, uh, Michigan was a red state last year, but in, in, in consistently red states, the governors, the Republican governors, have embraced, in a lot of cases, um, the expansion of Medicaid because it has the consistency of better health care for your citizens. Uh, let's talk about uh, Detroit. Uh, you are among the biggest employers in downtown Detroit now. Uh, you're a big part of what's changing uh, in the city. What, what's exciting you right now about uh, about downtown Detroit? Oh, the buzz is phenomenal. I mean, you, you get it, 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 it. We're thrilled to be part of it. Um, we sort of, in in a in a weird way. Within a week of each other, both Quicken and Blue Cross decided to move their suburban operations to downtown Detroit. And, you know, Dan has put it on steroids, which is phenomenal for the city, the Elliches as well. But, um, you know, the buzz, I was talking to Sandy Pierce last night, the, the CEO of Huntington here in Michigan, and who's getting on the list to want to go into the Hudson's building? I mean, it's just, it's awesome. Um, you know, we've got to deal with some issues. I mean, the, 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 Auto uh, insurance issues got to be dealt with. Education's got to be dealt with. Uh, we've got to move the success in downtown into the neighborhoods. Yeah. I mean, that all is to come. It's got to come. But, you know, it's exciting. And when you think about it, you know, you go back 10 years ago, eight years ago, you know, we were in despair. And this is a major American success story. And, you know, it's kind of cool to be part of it. Yeah, quickly, regional transit uh, is a big issue up here. Business is getting involved and trying to say, hey, we need this for the region. Yeah, and, you know, you think about it, and, you know, whether you're in Birmingham or in downtown Detroit or in, in Mount Clemens or Ann Arbor, um, you know, one of the bigger things that we lost the, uh, uh, the Amazon bid on, and there were several issues, uh, but it was public transit. And f to end up being a world-class community, you got to have, uh, you know, seamless public transit. And I give Jerry Anderson a lot of credit for having spearheaded this. We're all in on it. Uh, you know, it's a big deal to our, our own employees. But, you know, to move people both in and out of the city, it's table stakes, Stephen. And, you know, we got to do something about it. Dan Lepp, CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, thanks for being here. Thanks, Stephen.